Chapter 1. Hell. Question. In present times, we can no longer admit that the hell of fire and flames of which the Catholic religion talks to us about is anything other than a religious superstition, according to the men of science. Is that true, Master? Answer. Distinguished gentlemen, allow me to inform you that any inferno of a religious type is exclusively symbolic. It is not superfluous in these instances to remember the icy inferno of the Nordics, the Chinese hell with all its yellow torments, the Buddhist hell, the Mohammedan hell, or the infernal island of the ancient inhabitants of the country of Meroplisi, whose civilization is today found hidden in the sands of the Gobi Desert. Unquestionably, these various traditional infernos allegorize the submerged mineral kingdom in an emphatic manner. Remember, good friend, that Dante found his inferno in the living entrails of the earth, read the Divine Comedy. Question. Master, you speak to us about the submerged mineral world. However, all the perforations carried out by mining, petroleum, and other types of companies on the earth's crust have not shown signs of a living world that could even be in the first layer of the earth. Where is that submerged mineral world? Answer. Great friend, allow me to inform you that the three-dimensional world of Euclid is not everything. Ostensibly, above this world of three dimensions, length, width, and height, various superior dimensions exist. Obviously, in accordance with the law of contrasts, various infradimensions of a submerged mineral type exist below this three-dimensional zone. It is indubitable that the quoted hells of a Dantesque type correspond to these infradimensions. Question. Master, forgive me for insisting, but in all the books that I have searched due to my yearnings, I do not remember any writings or documents that talk about those infradimensions, much less indicate how to discover them. Therefore, I ask you, what is the purpose of talking shout infradimension? Which, as far as I have been able to verify, no human being has been able to see or touch. Answer. Distinguished gentlemen, your question seems very interesting to me, however. It is good to clarify that the universal Christian Gnostic movement has systems, methods of direct experimentation, through which we can verify the crude reality of the infradimensions of nature and of the cosmos. We should, and we can, locate the nine Danteistic circles below the epidermis of the earth, within the interior of the planetary org in which we live. Obviously, the quoted nine circles correspond intelligently with the nine natural infradimensions. It is evident and manifest that the nine heavens of Dante's Divine Comedy are nine dimensions of a superior type intimately correlated with the nine of inferior type. Whoever has studied the Divine Comedy at some point from the esoteric point of view will not be able to ignore the reality of the infernal worlds. Question. Master, what is the basic difference between the hells of Catholicism and those considered in the Gnostic movement? Answer. Good friend, the difference between the symbolic hells of one or another religion is that which can exist between one flag and another flag of the different nations. Each country allegorizes its existence with a national flag. Likewise, each religion symbolizes the infernal worlds with an allegory of an infernal type. However, all Christian, Chinese, or Buddhist hell, etc., are in essence nothing else but mere different emblems, which correspond to the crude realism of the atomic hells of nature and of the cosmos. Question. Why do people have nightmares, as we commonly say? What happens in this case? Is it that they travel to those infradimensional worlds? Answer. It is with great pleasure that I will answer this interesting question from the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to comprehend what nightmares really are. Occult anatomy teaches that there are seven infernal doors seven inhuman chakras, or negative vortices of sinister forces in the lower abdomen. 
It could be the case that someone that has an indigestion because of a heavy meal may activate said infernal chakras through this disorder. Then those abysmal doors open, as is clearly taught by the religion of Muhammad, and the individual penetrates the infernal worlds that night. This is possible by means of the unfoldment of the personality. It is not difficult for the ego to penetrate the dwelling of Pluto. The monsters and nightmares really exist. They are originally derived from archaic times. They normally inhabit the infradimensions of the submerged mineral world. Question. Does this mean, Venerable Master, that not only those who die without having saved their soul enter hell? Answer. It is patent, clear, and manifest that the living also penetrate the infernal worlds as is being demonstrated by nightmares. Ostensibly, the human infraconscious is infernal in nature. It could be said with total meridian clarity that all the abysmal horrors are in the atomic infernos of man. Using other words, we emphasize the following. The infernal abysses are in no way divorced from our own subconscious and infraconscious. Now the audience will comprehend why it is so easy to penetrate the nine dantestic circles at any time. Question, beloved master, I really do not comprehend why you first said that the infernal worlds are in the infradimensions of the earth. And then you mention that those atomic infernos are found within oneself. Would you be so kind as clarify this for me? Answer. Your question seems them to me. Whoever wants to discover the laws of nature should find them within himself. Whoever does not find within himself what he seeks will never find it outside of himself. The ancients said, man, know yourself and you will know the universe and the gods. We should find everything that exists in nature and in the cosmos in our interior. Therefore, the nine infernal Dantestic circles are within us here and now. Question, Master, I have had nightmares in which I have seen a world of darkness and many monsters. Could it be that I have entered those infradimensional or infernal worlds? Answer, your question is important. It is necessary for the audience to comprehend that those infradimensions are in the submerged depth of our nature. Obviously, I repeat, the seven doors of the atomic infernos of the lower abdomen open by means of nightmares and we then descend to the submerged worlds. Rare are the persons who in their life have not taken a visit to Pluto's kingdom. However, it is good, ladies and gentlemen, that upon studying this matter, we should think about the crude natural realism of those worlds which are situated in the infradimensions of the planet in which we live. Let us think for an instant of the worlds which penetrate and interpenetrate each other mutually without becoming entangled of densely inhabited regions, etc. In no way should we interpret the religious allegories literally. Let us look for the spirit which vivifies and gives life. The diverse infernos of religions allegorize crudely natural realities. We should not confuse the symbols with the cosmic phenomena in themselves. Question. Master, I would like you to explain to me some more about those infernal worlds, since I have never seen light nor beautiful faces in those nightmares which I have had. Answer. With the greatest of pleasure, I will give you an answer to this question. The infernal darkness is another type of light. It certainly corresponds to the gamma of the infrared, the inhabitants of such subterranean domains perceive the diverse variants of colorings corresponding to that zone of the solar spectrum. I want you, my friends, to understand that all the colors that exist in the ultraviolet are also found in the infrared. It is something very well known that there exists a yellow color in the ultraviolet. But in the infrared, the yellow also exists in a different manner. And this also happens with the other colors. Therefore, I repeat in an emphatic manner the following. Darkness is another type of light. Unquestionably, the inhabitants of the submerged mineral kingdom 
find themselves too far from the sacred absolute sun, and because of this are certainly terribly malignant and frightfully ugly. Question. I conceive, Master, that in the submerged worlds of the Earth exist all types of monsters, and that they live there. But how is it possible that within my very self, my being so in comparison to the planet, I can find precisely those worlds? Answer. My good friend, allow me to tell you that any molecule of cotton or iron or copper, etc., is a whole solar system in miniature. A disciple of Marconi imagined precisely our solar system looking like a great cosmic molecule. Whoever does not discover in a simple molecule the movement of the planets around the sun is certainly very far from understanding astronomy. No one is unlinked from the universe. There really does not exist effect without cause, nor cause without effect. In the same manner, within each of us, there are forces and atoms that correlate whether it be with the celestial spheres or with the infernal spheres. It is good to know that in our organism exist psychic centers that make us relate with the nine superior dimensions of the cosmos, or with the nine inferior dimensions. I have already clearly said that this three-dimensional world in which we live is not everything, since above we have the superior worlds and below the inferior ones. Unquestionably, all these dimensions, celestial or infernal, are related with the distinct zones of our own psyche. And because of this, if we do not discover them within our very selves, we will not discover them anywhere. Question. Master, you frequently mention the word atomic abysses. Why atomic? Answer. This question seems to me extraordinary, and with the greatest of pleasure, I will give an answer. Before anything else, I want you to know that every atom is a trinity of matter, energy, and consciousness. Let us think for a moment on the atomic intelligences. Obviously, there are solar and lunar ones. There also exist terribly perverse, malignant atomic intelligences. The atoms of the secret enemy within our organism are controlled by a certain malignant atom, located exactly in the coccygeal bone. This type of atom causes illnesses and originates in us distinct manifestations of perversity. Let us expand a little more on this information and let us think for a moment on all the malignant atoms of the planet Earth. Obviously, the heavier ones, the more demonic ones, inhabit the dwelling of Pluto, that is, the infradimensions of the world in which we live. Now, you will understand the reason why we talk of atomic abysses, of atomic infernos, etc. Question. I think that the majority of us, when we think in terms of the atom, we imagine something infinitely small. Then we told that all the suns and planets of the cosmos constitute an atom. It changes the order of our reasoning process a little. Is this congruent, Master? Answer. Distinguished gentleman and friend, it has never occurred to me to think of reducing all the universe or universes to a simple atom. Allow me to tell you that worlds, suns, satellites, etc. are constituted by sums of atoms, and this is different, right? If in any portion of my talk I compared the solar system with a large molecule, I did it based on the law of philosophical analogies but I never meant to reduce such a system to a simple atom.